We're at a critical time in this pandemic. Our biggest city is in lockdown. Vaccination rates and compliance are too low in the very suburbs COVID is circulating. And social media is full of wackos spreading concocted rubbish about the virus. Well, this traumatised son has just lost his mother and father to COVID and three other family members have tested positive. If you're doubting the need for vaccinations or the existence of the virus, please listen and tell your friends. If anyone ever needed convincing how devastating COVID can be, listen to Khalil Ibrahim. One week on Tuesday you lose your mom. Friday you lose your dad, that's very hard. Then we had the funeral on Sunday. It is very hard. It's not a joke. There's no conspiracy here. We're real people, a real family. Happy birthday to you. 88-year-old Hashem and 82-year-old Korkab were mum and dad to eight children, grandparents to 53. We didn't get to see them. We haven't seen them in months. We didn't get to say goodbye. Khalil and his wife, Basima, always took the virus seriously, but never imagined the damage it could do. It's nasty. It spreads. It's horrendous. It takes lives away, destroys family. It was so quick. What, what happened? My mother-in-law was not well. So she was taken to RPA hospital. So protocol, you have a COVID test and she tested positive. So then um, RPA sent a medical team to the house in Marrickville and they tested all family members. And of the five, four tested uh, positive. Corcab had survived a four year battle with cancer. I said, oh no, your mum's a fighter. She's been in hospital before and we'll get through it. And he said, no, this time it's different. The COVID has taken a toll on her. She couldn't breathe, she told us. She couldn't breathe, her bones were aching, she couldn't walk, she was, going, she was suffering. Same thing with dad, we asked dad, and Dad said exactly the same thing. I can't breathe. There's something on my chest. My lungs are closing. COVID would kill them both within days. She just passed away. And my dad... Then my dad... was very upset, crying. What did your dad say after your mum passed? The next morning, he, he told us that he's going to die. He's not coming back home. That's what he said. He goes, I'm not going. I'm not coming back home. I'm going to follow you, Mum. And that's what happened. For such a close family, only a few got to say goodbye. Especially my older brother, Khudr, he is locked in house. Can't go anywhere. Like the funeral went past the house and he was just sticking his head from the window. He broke my heart. He's my older brother. To make it worse, Hashem and Korkab were both booked in to get their vaccination. They're supposed to have it this week, the jab. What can we do? Then coffin. What do you say to anybody who is reluctant to, to get a vaccine? It's funny how people have to beg us to keep our families safe. I mean, if you love your aunt and your uncle and your grandmother and your grandfather and your children, wouldn't you want to do anything you could to protect them? Now every single person from our family, after my mum and dad passed away, cousins, brothers, sisters, Everyone wants to do the job now. It's too late. Why have people been so reluctant to get the job, do you think, especially in these communities? Conspiracy theory. Yep. And social media. That's right. Main thing, 
you listen to our doctors in this country here, listen to our politicians here. Move on. Social distance, please. Outside Lakemba's mosque. People have become desperate to do the right thing, even if it means breaking the rules. You need to social distance, please. You are too close. How hard is it to, to keep it safe here today? Very hard. As you can see, nobody is listening to us uh, social distancing. We have to move them in here. We are trying our best to keep them social distancing, to make sure they're wearing their masks. We know that they all want to be vaccinated and that's great, um, but it is a difficult um, task. There's one vaccine they want here today though, isn't there? They all want Pfizer and we have limited amounts of Pfizer and there's nothing that we can do about that. Are you willing to take AstraZeneca? Because we're going to run out. We're told that the hundreds here will be offered a vaccine today, but the big problem is that majority of people in this line want Pfizer. There's only 160 of them to give out here today. So the challenge is to convince everybody else to take an AstraZeneca instead. We've been waiting since um, 4 o'clock. We came here around 5 o'clock, say about five, 5 hours we've been waiting. I'm hoping to get Pfizer. I'm, I'm an essential worker, so yeah, I'm eligible for it. Will you take AstraZeneca if you can't get it? Uh, I prefer not to, but if it comes down to it, then the day we'll do what we need to do. This line goes all the way up. Canterbury Bankstown councillor Bilal Al Hayek says the younger generations aren't listening. Why aren't they? What are they telling you? Oh, look, there, there might be some people that don't believe in COVID, uh, just like anywhere else. There, there might be some people uh, that don't want to have the jab. If we didn't have social media, majority of Australia would be vaccinated at the moment as well. Uh, so social media has created a problem uh, in terms of the messaging and the government didn't help either. From the chaos to the quiet, Mayor Cal Asfor is counting the cost of relentless case numbers in his community. It's quite sad. It's really upsetting. Um, you know, usually this would be a thriving bustling place at this time of day and as you can see all the shops are closed locked up how do you convince that minority well we need to keep talking to them through our community leaders uh, we've got a lot of police on the ground we've got a lot of uh, adf on the ground now so the message is there and if they're going to do the wrong thing they should be punished we just have to hang in there very bad and be strong for everybody else we would ask in every single person in Australia, all Australians, let's stand together, let's help each other, let's do it, we can do it. That's an important message.